anything to do with freedom. Clavin Bundy did not recognize that this was, in fact, federal land. He did not believe he had to pay those fees that the courts told him he had to pay because he said the feds own over 80 percent of Nevada and his family had been there long before they claimed that ownership. Tonight, we have this exclusive new look inside of this fight. Today is the greatest day in my lifetime. I've lived 65 years. The government just keep taking more and more, more federal government. Today, that's for the free men of America, right there, for them soldiers that died and fought for them. That's right here. That's the best thing I've seen, the people taking the country back. They said they were going to tax him more, and he said, nope, I'm not selling it, I'm not paying it. It's taxation without representation. Basically what they've done with this federal government law enforcement here, we've been paying their way to come here and point guns at these free people. And that became a big part of the story, the tactics used by the feds. Joining us now, documentary filmmaker Dennis Michael Lynch, who was right in the thick of things, bringing us this extraordinary video we've been showing you, facing down some of these armed officers himself, and even working to bring about a peaceful resolution. Wait until you see some more of these clips we're about to show them. Dennis, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Megan, for covering the story. So that turned out to be, I mean, legally, the feds had Clive and Bundy dead to rights. That's my opinion as a lawyer. Uh, two courts took a hard look at it and said, Mr. Bundy, you lose, you have to pay. But mis what Mr. Bundy said was, well, if that's the law, the law is wrong. I don't recognize the federal government's right to, to tell me, get off this land or pay fees, because I've been here for a long, long time, and my answers have been here a long, long time. I'll pay to Nevada, but I'm not going to pay the federal government. So it came down to, for him, a matter of principle. He didn't think the law was right. You went out there. How tense was it? Well, you know the kind of work I do. This was, I've never experienced anything like this. Even along the southern border where you, where you go? I've, I've looked at cartel in the face. This was different. Um, this was different for a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, I'm a New Yorker. You're not going to BS me. And when I went down there, before I'm going to put myself in harm's way, I had to understand who these Bundys were. If they were some kind of shysters, I was going to stand back. These people were willing to die on Saturday. They were willing to die. I heard it in their voices. I saw it in their eyes. And that's when I really got nervous, because you have Americans against Americans. And I'm seeing this as becoming the trend. And that's why, you know, we're, we're standing there, and they're, they're, they're making a prayer before they go, they, they go into battle. We have some of that. Let's okay. just show, okay. let's just show the, the audience. This is clip number three of the prayer before they went to confront, confront the agents. As we go about this task, that we will be safe, and that we can invoke thy power to defend us. We ask these things humbly in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Get some courage and walk up there and ask them to demand. I, it's amazing because my heart is actually beating as I'm watching them. When they made that prayer, Megan, uh, what I did was they said we're going to go as a group, and I ran ahead. I, I don't know why. Something in my head just said you got to go. This could end badly. This could end badly. These people are going to start shooting at each other. So I went towards them. You have the video of that too. And I just raised my hands up and I said, "Are you no. really going to shoot these?" And people? I want to get to that, but but, okay. but the reason they were praying and the reason you were worried is they had been told that there were orders to shoot. Yes. That's also on camera. This is soundbite number two. Watch. There's no reason for anybody to get hurt, to lose their lives on either side. But it's a possibility. Some, it, it, well, they're just on the phone with Metro. Metro has the word to shoot on the people going up to get the cows right now. So the mindset of those in that prayer circle and of those who are going to go confront the Fed over what they believed, I guess, is a moral issue for them. Yeah. We're, we're willing to put their lives on the line. We're willing to put the lives of federal agents trying to do their jobs on the line. I mean, I, it must, you must have been somewhat fearful. They must have been as well. Yeah, I, it, was a, it was a situation that um, it's hard to describe to you in words, and you've got to see it. I can just tell you that I've never met anybody in my life who was willing to give their life because they didn't want to pay a tax or a fee. This is more than that. It's about big government for some of these it's about ranchers and militia. I mean, see, the, the militia thing gets a little bit, it gets a little overcooked. There was also women and children there, and there were cowboys, and I don't mean cowboys like crazy cowboys. I mean, they were good cowboys, you know, the kind of guys you'd like to hang out with on a Friday night and have a beer with. And, you know, I'm the only guy who's not from the area, so I have no emotional attachment to this, and, and I'm telling you, I have no, nothing to gain from the Bundys. Well, when okay. I watch you make these videos, you don't, you don't normally become the news. You normally shoot the news, and yet 
I want to show our viewers what happened with you. And you were you found yourself as sort of a, a mediator of sorts yeah. in a moment here. I'm tired of going to these things and watching Americans at, at war with each other. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Watch it play out. I'll put the camera down. Can I approach? I have no weapon. Are you really going to shoot these people if they move forward, yes or no? If you know, you shoot. If you shoot me, you shoot. I got no gun. I'm asking you one question. Sir. I do not have a weapon. I'm not from New York. May I approach so this doesn't end in bloodshed? What is wrong with you? Come on. My wife isn't talking to me. <laughs> but, but, I mean, the, the federal agents and the local agents who were there had, had to be fearful for their own lives as well because this is a situation in which they've been sworn to uphold the law. Yes. And the law according to two courts, was on their side. And what are we as a society if we don't abide by a rule of law? And I, I mean, I know people said that back in the 1960s, too, when we had Jim Crow laws in place, and, and others in this country said, we will rise up and we will change that law. There are two important things I have to say before we go. Number one is that I, I was part of the, 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 the crew that went over and, and was there when they were negotiating the deal. And as I'm walking by, one of the armed guys handed me a water. You could see I was so thirsty. And he says, please make sure when you're on TV that they know this. And what he was trying to say to me is that he did not want to have that gun pointed like that. Now, some people will say, well, he has the option to put it down. I can tell you a lot of those guys did not have their guns up. Now, they worry about their, their own families, well, too. Because they know that they're pointing at Americans. And number two is the BLM has selective management. Because as much as I do down at the border, Megan, the BLM owns property all along the border. So my contention is... The Bundys will start paying a fee to them when they start taking a fee from the cartels who use that property to bring drugs into this country. Because I can tell you, I never see the M16s down on the border stopping the drugs and the terrorists and the day laborers coming through on BLM property. It's just an open door. But they're going to point M16s at our face to save some turtles and to collect a fee. This is a much bigger story than anybody's giving notice to. And I'm not going to sit here and make speculation what it is. I also want to say that I talked to the Bundys before I came on TV, and the rumors that are going on that the BLM is still there and they're planning an attack is all BS. Okay. They've kept to their word so far. The Bundys said they will contact me if, if something changes to that point. And, you know, for anybody who's going to think that these people are manipulative and just doing this about money, Megan, I look you in the eye and I know who you are. I look those people in the eye. They're for real. Mm -hmm. They're for real.